I obeyed the Spirit were wing when he said, Will thou be clean? I will praise him. I will praise him. Praise the Lamb for sinners slain. Give him glory, all ye people, for blood can wash away each stain. On the second, we'll try it. Though the way seems straight and narrow, all my strength was well. My ambition, plans, and wishes at my feet in ashes lay. I will praise him, I will praise him, praise the Lamb for sinners slain. Give him glory, all ye people, for his blood can wash away each stain. Glory, glory to the Father. Glory, glory to the Son. Glory, glory to the Spirit. Glory to the three in one. I will praise Him. I will praise Him. Praise the Lamb for sinners slain. Give Him glory, all ye people, for His blood can wash away each stain. It's not bad for the first time. Miss Ruth keeps me on my toes on these songs, though. <laughs> Turn to page number two. This isn't this one we know. Page number two. Down at the cross where my Savior died, down where from cleansing from sin I cried, there to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to His name, glory to His name, glory to His name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. I am so wondrously saved from sin. Which abides within. There at the cross where he took me in. Glory to his name. His name, glory to His name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to His name. Come to this fountain so rich and sweet. Cast our poor soul at the Savior's feet. Plunge in today and be made complete. Glory to His name, glory to His name, glory to His name. There to my heart was the blood applied, glory to His name. Amen. Let's bow for prayer. Father, we thank you this evening for your blessings. We thank you, Lord, for the good service this morning. We continue to pray, Father, for those who are unable to be here, that are sick. Lord, we just pray, Lord, you touch bodies and heal them and raise them up. Father, we just pray also, Lord, that you bless the service and I help us, Lord, uh, to pay attention, Lord, to the Spirit's direction in our lives, to uh, follow uh, his direction, and, uh, Lord, that we would be submissive, Lord, to the will of God. Father, that we'd worship you tonight in spirit and in we ask all this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. As we uh, uh, begin the service tonight, just reminding you that 
Uh, there are several out sick. Brother Kirk's sick. Brother uh, Mrs. Uh, Ferguson's sick. Uh, Mrs. Uh, uh, Frankie is sick, and uh, I know there's some others. I, I know some are having some um, some difficulties that struggles that they're dealing with, and uh, they ought to be in church for the Lord to help them through that. But uh, they have chosen to distance themselves. So uh, be in prayer for those families. I've got a couple that away, so uh, be in prayer for them if you will. And then don't forget what's coming up. We've got uh, uh, church uh, business meeting Sunday night um, following the evening service. And then uh, we've got uh, uh, time change just coming and all those fun things that are uh, uh, revival with uh, Dr. Sam Davison will be here at uh, the end of the month, 26th through, uh, 26 through 29th, I think it is. I have a bulletin I could look at it and see. Uh, yes, 27th through the 29th. No, 26th through the 29th. The next one down is 27th. Okay. So, anyway, <laughs> just to remember those things. Keep your bulletin handy. Mark it on your calendar. And uh, you know, if you do like me, I've got all these appointments that need to be done. And not a one of them is on my calendar. And thankfully, the doctor's offices and all that, they send me reminders. And I told Michael today, after about the fifth reminder for his appointment tomorrow, uh, Said, I think they really want you to be there, Michael. <laughs> you know, I've confirmed by text message. I've confirmed by uh, phone. I've confirm, confirmed by voice. I mean, everything in the world. And so uh, and they called again today. So I'm going, I think they want us to be there. So anyway, but uh, uh, be in prayer uh, also for, for all of that. And uh, just take care. Make sure you uh, continue to do more to work. Turn to page number 246. Page number 246. Let's all stand. We'll ask the men to come forward to the offering on the last course, 246. Redeemed, how I love to proclaim it. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed through His infinite mercy. His child and forever I am. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed, redeemed, His child and forever I am. Redeemed and so happy in Jesus, no language my rapture can tell. I know that the light of His presence with me does continually dwell. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed, redeemed, His child and forever I am. I know I shall see in His beauty the King in His law I delight, who lovingly guarded my footsteps, giveth me songs in the night. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed, redeemed, His child and forever I am. receive the offering this evening don't forget to uh, your missionaries not only to support them financially uh, but also to pray for them and uh, several are in countries right now that are uh, difficult and uh, even our missionaries in, in Mexico are finding it harder more difficult to do the ministry uh, uh, in the churches that are being planted in Africa there's, there's situations that are uh, that are dire right now and so uh, be in prayer for all of your missionaries, if you will. So, God, for prayer for the rich and priest, you in prayer, please. Let's pray. Father, we thank you this evening for bringing us back here this evening, Lord. And we just thank you, Lord, that we are redeemed. We are all headed to heaven.
Father, we do pray for our missionaries out there scattered all over the world. Lord, just pray for their safety. And Lord, that they will find the love of lost souls to bring to you. And Father, we just ask you to accept this offering this evening. Lord, just use it to the presence of your Son. We ask all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I enjoy her to play. You know, she does a good job. She works hard at it. It's like anything else, you know. We work hard. Get up here and see if everything falls apart, you know. So, I kind of got tickled there this afternoon. Well, she wanted to do that song this morning. I said, I don't know if I know it enough to do it. So I said, this afternoon we'll try it. She said, well, you want to try it? I said, sure. All I can do is mess it up, so we're okay. <laughs> but I appreciate it. It's a pretty song. So I, I, I appreciate her doing that. I, I do, and I want her to know that. You know, we all get in there and start doing stuff, and it happens to all of us. So it's just not just one. Well, I spent yesterday, me and my wife, at a one-day Bible conference in New Caney with my pastor friend who I was at Greenwood with. We sang together in a men's quartet. We just had a blast. And uh, we had 25 minutes. So if I make 25 minutes, we'll be done early. If. I said if. I didn't say I would. <laughs> they had, they went, I think they had eight or nine, eight preachers, I think it was. Four in the morning and four in the afternoon. And we got done by five. A little before five. Four, three, and uh, we thoroughly, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Got my toe stepped on and things like that, but. It was awesome. I tell you what, it's things that we needed. Uh, one of the guys that pastors a church up in Buffalo, he drove down. The last time he was at his church, and we drove up to Buffalo. And uh, Deb spent the night and had a great time. And uh, Deb got to sing with me for the first time in almost two years. I was so thankful. We were, we were driving the car headed that way, and I said, well, you think you can sing? So I don't know. I said, well, we'll try it. We put the CD in, and we made it the first time. Okay, we'll try a second time. Just make sure we we know it. We hadn't done it in a while. Put it back in, and uh, we made it the second time. She goes, not no more until we get ready to sing. That was it. I'm not going to trust that voice again. But I appreciate that we had a good time. They had a couple other groups up there that uh, the people that sang enjoyed it. Uh, get to go back in April. They've got a Bible conference coming up, and I get to go do, we, me and Deb get to go sing a couple of nights up there. So I'm excited. I just love to do what God wants me to do. That's the important part. And I think it's just sometimes, it's just the way we have to do things. <clears throat> so my message tonight, hopefully it's gotten better. I, I did it in chapel. I did it yesterday. Maybe I'll do it today. Maybe it'll be even better today after I got three times at it. But uh, I really... I was getting ready to, for chapel, and uh, Jimmy had something come up. He said, can you do it? And I said, okay. And so I was trying okay, trying to teach class and trying to think, what what, what can I do? You know, one of those things, and I, God laid this on my heart. And I tell you what, it's something we all need, me included. So it's not something that I, I thought, hey, somebody else needs this. No, I needed it. And if you'll turn to Daniel chapter 6. We're only going to we're going to start with just the first three verses of Daniel chapter six, and we're going to take off.
but I do get I enjoy getting to preach I used to I'd be scared to death I, sometimes I'm nervous but it'll ease up in a little bit but uh, I, I enjoyed it everybody find it now it's like there uh, it says it pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 princes which should be over the whole kingdom and over these three presidents of whom Daniel was first that the princes might give account unto them that and the king should have no damage then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes because of an excellent spirit was in him and the king thought to set him over the whole realm I want us to think a minute about the excellent spirit I, I saw that and I thought you know that's what we as Christians need is an excellent spirit you know we're driving down the road we need an excellent spirit you know in the a, in a store sometimes we need an excellent you know these people decide to put their park their buggy in the middle and you can't go either way and you have to turn around and go all the way around to get to the other side you know we need that excellent spirit and it's something that we need I I got this from uh, Dr. Paul Chapel. So it's, it, this is not new. This is, this is something he had. But I thought it was very good. And it says, an excellent spirit attracts people. And it says, when found in a young lady, it attracts a young man. When found in a dad, it attracts his children's loyalty. When found in a wife, it attracts her husband's heart. When found in a soul winner, it attracts an unsaved person's attention and time. When found in a church, it attracts repeat visitors. Bottom line, an excellent spirit attracts. And that's what it should be. It should be something that attracts people to our Lord and Savior. In our lives and what we do, we need to see that. And so as we, as we look at this and kind of get an idea of what God is trying to say to us, and uh, let's look at a few areas. Number one, one area we need to do is we need a personal walk with God. That's the biggest thing, the most important thing that we need in our life. You know, I use the illustration a lot of times. But you know, when, when our kids were little, when we were little, you know, we can remember that far back. And, you know, mom and dad were right there beside you. They were holding your hand. You didn't do a lot of things wrong, you know. I knew that. Now, some of these kids, they do whatever they want to, and the parents, I ask you to be quiet. I'm thinking, yeah, take care of business, and they'll quit. But when my mom and dad and our kids were growing up, we uh, we, we expected it. And dad looked at us and said, you behave or you're going to get a spanking. And he, I knew he meant it. It wasn't those things, oh, it's coming in, you know, maybe down the road. No, he was going to take care of business. And you know, the closer we walked with, with our parents, the better we walked like we should. The closer we walk with God, we're going to stay close to Him. We're going to do what He asks us to do. You know, we get, our, we get ourselves in trouble so much when we think, God, I don't need your help on this one. This one's easy. You just sit up on the shelf and I'll take care of it. And there's our downfall right there. Every time. You know, every time. I... We need to read the Bible. We need to take time to read the Bible. Set you out of time. Set you out something you're going to do and read. You know, every once in a while you make a mistake and you forget it and you mess up. But don't say, well, I quit. I'll start next year. No. The next day, start it over. Re begin reading. It's amazing what that scripture talks to us about. It's amazing what God allows us to hear in our life. We need to have that walk. I need to be able to talk to God any time of the day. A lot of the preachers that I've heard a long time, some of the men that have gone on to be with the Lord, they always had a walk with God. And you could tell by the way they preached. You could tell by the way they acted. Everything about them, you could tell. And I realized, you know, that's what I need. My daddy wasn't perfect. But he had to walk with God. I remember that one year he decided to read the Bible through 12 times. He felt he, he only read it 10. You know, messed up. 
summer came out and, and the grass grew and uh, he cut grass and so he messed up but he still read it 10 times you know if we'll just set a time read three chapters four chapters I try to get my young people to read just read one chapter a day just one and I said this the other day in Psalms 119 that's one chapter that's not divided up into 14 or 15, you know. That's one chapter. Some chapters are real short. But some chapters are long. But we need to have a walk with God. And we need to be an example of a walk with God so people around us see it. If we don't, you know, our, our people that work with us, if we are in charge of a department or something, people who work for us if you don't have that excellent spirit they're going to say why should I do it for you so it's very important we need to have a walk with God uh, Mark 135 says and in the morning rising up a great while before day he went out and departed into a solitary place and prayed we need to have time to talk with God Lord we need this. my neighbor talk to us and she said we all remember us in prayer we're having a situation and we pray every night that God would intervene but also pray every night that they'll give the heart of Christ because you know I don't know I'm not judging but they don't go to church at all, at all. Uh, they do other things and so I don't know but we just need to be a Christian use my I, you know we ought to our, our tracks we ought to have our tracks so that we can get people they ought to know that there's a that we're a Christian not because I'm got my head up in the air and say man I'm just better than everybody else because I'm not I'm a sinner saved by the grace of God is all I am I heard a preacher once say you know that prostitute that drunkard laying in the ditch there they are you realize that we could be those people. I'm so thankful God gave me a, a father who loved the Lord. Did I always agree with him? No. You know, I was a kid. I was a teenager. But I'm so thankful that Dad was a man who said, you know what, this book is Coming to church was important. You know, we need to be there every time the doors are open. Some people make it Sunday morning, and man, they can't do it the rest of the week. You know, maybe they make Sunday morning and Sunday night, but they can't make You know, we need to be in church. If we're going to have a walk with God, we've got to, be, we've got to study, and we've got to learn, and we've got to hear what God's saying to us. So it's very important that we see what God is trying to say. Number two, we need to have a right spirit. We need to have a right spirit. You know, when it comes to people who work under us, they need to see Christ in our life. They need to see us tell the truth. I use this illustration so much on this one, and, and everybody gets tired, but I, it's true. You know, a parent who gets up in the morning and doesn't want to go to work that day, and so they get on the phone and they act like they're dead and he's sick, and they go, oh, I can't be there. All right, I won't be there today. And they hang up, and then they get off and go elsewhere. That God's watching. Pastor yesterday used an illustration. I liked it. Me and Deb talked about it last night. He, he, hey, he's, he's a cowboy. He boots and everything. But he was saying that his son came to see him. And he brought his dog with him, and his wife and his son, little son. And they, the dog was in there, and he went out back and tore something totally. And he, his, his, his son said, Dad, I need your belt. And the dad looked at him and said, Son, I don't have a belt. He went on about the business. The little son was over there playing. He didn't know what was going on. About that time... That son started acting up. 
And Mama looked at that boy and he said, Son, if you don't quit, I'm going to borrow Grandpa's belt. He looked at her and he said, Grandpa don't have a belt. Yeah. He, he was listed. You know, kids listen. Kids see. You'll be amazed what they take in. And we don't do as we tell them. We do it so they can see us. They need to see our example. You know, I've been teaching for almost for 30 years. Those kids, I want to still be. Those that have kids of their own, we need to be. You know, we just need to have a right spirit. We need to know what's going on. Number three, we need to have a passion for something. You know, I keep tracks in my pocket. I like, my favorite track is the one, How to Get to Heaven from Texas. Number one is color. When you, when you put it down there, they get put that tip in there, those colors get you. But you know what? We need to have a passion. Because those people are going to die and go to heaven if they're not saved. I remember when we used to run buses, every Saturday morning we'd knock on doors. Sometimes they'd say something, next time they wouldn't show up. But we just need to have a passion. All of us. We visit on Saturday morning. And for the last two weeks, we call back in. After the Monday Bible conference, we call in. But we need to be busy. You know, sitting at home on Saturday morning, I just like you have lots of things I need to get done. You name them. I have to go grocery shopping. I like to eat. I love you. So you need to go grocery shopping. Now the grass is starting to grow. You got to cut grass. Things like that you got to do. But you know what? You ought to have a passion for these kids. You ought to have a passion for these kids in this school. You know, I tell people, yeah, it says Christian school. But a lot of the kids that come to our school are not Christian. They're here because parents want to put them in a place they can be saved. They need to know Christ. If we don't have a passion, we might as well close these doors and just stay home. I'm not trying to be ugly, it's the truth. We need to have that passion, we need a desire. I mean, one day at, at Walmart, Deb tried to give a man a track. He goes, I don't believe in that stuff. Hey, you, you turned it down. We tried our best to give him something that would show him how to get to heaven. They're not refusing you. They're refusing you. But we need it. We need to have that. We need to be very careful in how we do things. You know, it's important as we look at this. Uh, when you realize that Daniel had an excellent spirit. That excellent spirit was because those people around there knew who Daniel was. I love the story as it goes further down. It says, uh, Then the presidents and the princes sought to have find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom. And they could, could find none occasion nor fault. For as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. He did what he was supposed to do. There was no fault. Then said these men, We shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, except, except, he says here, we find it against him concerning the law of his God. He said, He's going to serve God. He's going to do what God would have him to do. He said, That's what they're going to do. And we've got to do it. So they went to the king, and they said, Go, king, live forever. I like that, you know. It's like the kids come to you. Mom, I just love you so much. My wife says, What do you want? Hey. <clears throat> I mean, that's what's happening. What do you want? Or, or Dev used to say, Hide the hide your billfold. You know, do you know that they're coming? But they said, Oh, king, live forever. Said, We know you're a good king. That's the 
Yeah, we got something we want to do. We want everybody to have to pray to you and you only for 30 days. Oh, that's good. Make me, make me better. They knew if they could get the king to sign it, Daniel would be in trouble. They knew. They knew that's what was happening. Now, the king said, okay, we will. And so he did it. And Daniel said, you know, oh, well, he signed that. I won't do that for 30 days. That's what some of us would do. That's what some of the people in the church will do. Ah, uh, you know, we'll wait 30 days and then we'll do it. No. Daniel went up and did it that same day. He said, you're not going to stop me. If it costs me my life, it's not going to stop me. I'm going to go do what God had me do. My decision is made. I pray this time. I'm going to keep it. And, of course, these presidents and all, they knew they had because he was going to do it. Lo and behold, he went up there and he prayed. They went to the king and said, King, this Daniel that you set over us. You know, when we're trying to do right, people don't like us. They don't like us. But you know what? We're serving the him, not the enemy. That's the key. When we realize it's him we're trying to serve, it's him we're trying to please, not Man's human. Man will make mistakes. God does. He said, This Daniel that you put over us. Hey, he just broke the law. And you can't change the law because the law that's set has to be that way. He was real upset. He realized he had been true. Somebody was going, somebody had done something, and he couldn't change it. So the next thing he said then at that point, he realized, the king went to Daniel and said, Daniel, go your God's spirit. I can see Daniel, I don't know. He may, he may not. Have you ever seen where a tornado went through and houses are just totally gone to the ground and everyone's standing there and not anything, not even a shingle or nothing can fall off of it. God can take care. And Daniel said, you know what? He may or he may not. I don't know. But that's him. So he went in that lion's den knowing that one of two things were going to happen. God was going to spare his life and those lions were, mouths were going to be shut. Or number two, he was meeting the Lord right there. One of the two was going to happen. I remember Dr. John R. Rice used to have an illustration that he was walking down the street and a guy stuck a gun in his face and said, your money or your life. He looked at that guy and he said, I'm sorry, you can't scare me to heaven. You know, that guy must have, I, I, I'd love to see his face. What's, you know, Daniel went in. And God took care of him. God's going to take care of us if we have that excellent spirit. It's up to us to do it. You know, everybody we come in contact with is either bound for heaven or bound for hell. What are, they, what are we going to help them get to heaven? Or are we going to help them get to heaven? Daniel didn't know, but he knew his God. We know God. I've said this so many times. We pray every night that God would touch either touch Patty's life and her body and make it new again, or he would give us a call for a transplant. I know he can. I just don't know what he's going to see for me. When Mama developed cancer, 
We pray to God with him. God didn't see pictures. But we got to have more God here before God. Our God can do lots of things. That's why when that lady came to my house last Sunday morning and said, will you pray with us? Will you pray with me? That's something we've done. I said, yes, I can do that. We pray. Right there in the middle of, in the, in the yard, after I got out of the fight away, I stepped into it. We prayed. Every time I said, The other morning she was out there, I said, go pray. You know, we need to have an excellence. Daniel walked out of that lion's den the next day, not being hurt. Nothing wrong with him. And those men who sought to have Daniel's life didn't make it in very fast. They were in there and it was gone. Their life was taken away. You know, God's going to take care of us. God's going to take care of us. When we look at that, we realize what God's wanted to say. You know, an excellent spirit, we need to have responsibility. And ex- uh, we need to execute our responsibility, whatever that might be. Pastor, as a deacon, as a song leader, whatever it might be, we need to do that duty, that responsibility. You know, when I, was, when I first started teaching, I had fourth grade, I had a parent who came in with her child, and she would go to his desk, no, her desk, and they would open the backpack, and she would put it all in the desk for him. Finally, about, about a week of that, I, I went to her and almost called her. Home. I said, ma'am, I said, I'm trying to teach my kids responsibility. I said, if you come in and take their books out, and then you come in after school and get their books out, they're not going to be responsibility. She goes, you're right. From then on, the, the, child, the, the daughter had two. And I had the son, and he had two also. What we're trying to do is teach responsibility. God's trying to teach us responsibility. You know, that's why we're supposed to be at church on Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. That's responsibility. When we go on vacation and we're out away from our church on a church night, we need to find a church. That's responsibility. That's just things like that we need. We need to know those things. God's, God wants us to realize that. God's going to help us meet our objectives if we take that responsibility. He's going to help us get through it. That's what's important. You know, we want to have a vision in our life for whatever God has. When I first surrendered to the Lord into full time, I didn't know what God wanted. I use this illustration. I have never flown an airplane before. The closest I got to an airplane was back when Hobby vowed you and you could actually go out there. And I, was, I, was, I was about this big. Okay? You know, I was little. We got on an airplane and sat down and all that stuff. I wanted to get out as quick as I could because I was afraid they might take off. I have never flown on an airplane. And I remember praying, Lord, I really don't know what you want. But if you call me into evangelism of some sort, then I have to fly. Lord, you know I don't like it. You know, there was a football coach who then was a uh, commentator. He never flew. He rode a bus. He'd go take him a week, I guess, to get there. But he rode a bus wherever he was going. Maybe that would have happened. But I finally told the Lord, I said, Lord, I'm going to give you everything. If you want me to fly, you'll give me the will to fly. He didn't want the will to fly. He wanted me to get full time. And then he gave me a job teaching kids. That's what's important. That was my responsibility. I need to be here. Every time you go I always tell them, I said, if I'm going to be going somewhere to preach, I want you to know. So when you walk in here and go, where is Coach or where is Brother Steve? He's preaching somewhere. He's not at home. Goofing off. I missed one Sunday morning. We hadn't missed it. 
I, think we, I think we counted about 13 years, or about 20 years, I think it was, that we had that I missed a Sunday morning. I just don't like missing. Say, are you crazy? Probably am. It's okay. I don't mind being crazy because this is important. This has got to be important, and it's got to be important to all of us. You want our church to grow? This has got to be important. Every one of us. Well, you know, everybody else has to do it. I don't. No. The Bible says all of us. That's what's important. All of us have to do what God wants to do. You know, another thing that will help us with our excellent spirit is faith. Faith in God. Everybody sit in your chair this, this evening. And none of them fail. I appreciate that. Remember a number of years ago when I was subbing for Brother Wilson, who was a math teacher at the other school. He goes, Steve, i got to go somewhere. You're off this period. Uh, will you take my class? I said, sure. He usually had stuff to do anyway, so it wasn't a real hard thing to do. Math was one of the things that I did care for. So I walked into the class, and I, my knee was bothering me, so I, I decided, okay, I'm going to put my knee up on the stool. And I reached down, and I touched the stool, and it went to the floor. You know, I never trusted his stool again. I would never get on that stool. I would never near that stool. I told Brother Wilson, I said, what did you try to do? He said, I just want to see if you'd sit on it. I said, it won't happen again. I promise you. And I didn't trust a long time. But you got in your car, you trusted your car. You went in your house, you trusted your house. By faith. You know what? I have faith in God. That when my life in on this earth is over, I will see my mom. I will see my dad. I will see a bunch of people that used to be in this church that have gone to be with the Lord. It's not a hope so. It's not a maybe so. Oh, Lord, please, please let it happen. No. It's a no so. But i got to live like it. One more. we got to be designed. What does God want you to do? About six years ago when God called me to preach, I thought, Lord, what in the world can I do? I'm old. I'm getting older. And I said, no idea what God wants. But I'm just going to do it. My desire is to serve God. My desire, when Paul asked me, he said, can you, would you come and sing? You and Deb come and sing at our conference in April. I said, yes, we I didn't ask. I knew God. that's what God wanted. You know, our desire is to be used to God. That's why I love to get to preach. I enjoyed traveling to uh, New Caney yesterday. I meet some preachers, some young preachers. One of them is very, very young. I remember when he used to stand about this tall. I got tickled at him yesterday. They were going to do three in, in the morning service, and he got to the, he got through, and there was still time before lunch. And he, so he, he, he goes, Pocket, Paul's son. He said, Pocket, go ahead and you come and preach now. And uh, he said, while you're at it, sing too. He said, afterwards I was talking to him, he said, you know, I was waiting to get my stuff. Dad told me that I was going to preach after lunch. So I knew after lunch I'd be everything ready, so I'd be ready to go. So his mom came and played the piano for him. He did preach. He did a great job. But the young man wants to serve. That's what we need. Is people willing to be desired to be used with him. I want to be used with Wherever that might be. lived in, in the South all my life. I lived in Texas all my life. I hadn't been to very many states. I don't know. If God said to go to up north, I'd be scared, but 
I don't like snow. Too cold. But if God wanted me, God said, do it. That's what we need to do. We need to have this. I promise you, if you will ask God, Daniel was used of God because Daniel had an excellent spirit. You know, if we're going to be used of God, we need to have an excellent spirit. They need to see Christ. When we may mess up, we need to apologize. I'm so sorry. Realize it? Sometimes we have to apologize to our own kids. Oh, I will never do that. Kids are looking at you. They're seeing you did wrong. If you don't say I did wrong, oh, it's okay to do it. So next time you read Daniel, and you read the third verse in chapter 6, and you see that word, excellent spirit, it ought to say, am I? Do I have an excellent spirit? This morning when I got on the road and that goofball decided to cut right in front of me, did I have an excellent spirit? To be truthful. I'm standing in the grocery line. Trying your best to get down the other end. And that lady, that man, they're standing in the middle. Basket right in the middle. One, somebody's on this side, and they're standing over here. Mm. Lord, how do you have excellent spirit? That's the key. When we read that, it ought to be something to us. It ought to say to us, you know what? That's what God I promise you. If we will have real close walk with him. He'll lead us to people who we can talk to. He'll give us a chance to show somebody how to be saved. I'm still praying, Lord, help us. Talk to that baby. Oh, I can do it. It doesn't have to be me. But you know what? I want to be on the way. That's the key. We need to do that. We need to design. We need to have an excellent spirit. It attracts people. And that's what, that should be our design. Right. Let's bow our heads. Let's stand. Everybody bow their heads. Most of us here tonight are saved. You know, we say we are. But there's some, some, sometimes we may realize, you know what? Lord, I didn't have an excellent spirit as I should when I was disciplining my child, I didn't have an excellent spirit. Lord, please forgive me. Please help me to do what you want. I am the Father. We do thank you, Lord, for your many blessings. I thank you for giving me a chance to preach. I thank you for giving me a message. Lord, I just ask you now that you'll help us to take this in and to strive to do your will that souls might be saved lives might be changed you'll see Christ bless this time of invitation Amen. you want to come and kneel at the altar you can